Welcome to this video where we are going to discuss biconditional statements. A biconditional statement is a statement written when a conditional statement and its converse is true. It contains the phrase if and only if. When we take a conditional and a converse that's true, we can create a biconditional statement. Let's dive into our first example. It says to write the converse in the biconditional statement. If two angles sum to 180 degrees, then the two angles are supplementary. Let's start with writing the converse. The converse, remember, is switching the order of the hypothesis and the conclusion. So the converse would be if two angles are supplementary, then they add to 180 degrees. To write the biconditional statement, we're going to take from the conditional the hypothesis and the conclusion and sandwich it between our if and only if. So for the biconditional, it means it works both ways. Two angles sum to 180 degrees if and only if the two angles are supplementary. So when both statements are true, we can write a biconditional statement. That means no matter which direction we think of it, either with the conditional or the converse, it is a true statement. Write the converse and by conditional statements. The one thing I want to sh show you, a shortcut for if and only if, as mathematicians, we don't like to write a whole lot. So this can be shortened if you spell if with an extra if, with an extra F. So IFF can replace our if and only if statements. So for example, the converse of the statement would be if x equals 3 then 2x plus 5 equals 11 and we can verify that 2 times 3 would be 6 plus 5 would be 11 so because they are both true statements we can write a biconditional statement that says 2x plus 5 equals 11 if and only if I'm replacing that x equals 3. Remember, if and only if, you can use IFF to, short, to create a shortcut while you're writing. Here it says, write the conditional and converse statement within each biconditional. A square has side length 5, if and only if, it has an area of 25. So remember when we created the biconditional statement, we had a hypothesis and conclusion. So for the conditional, we could say this. If a square has side length 5,
then it has an area of 25. The converse would be the reverse of that. So if a square has an area of 25, then it has a side length of 5. Let's try one more. Oh, sorry. We got to do step two here. We want to determine if it is true. And in this case, it is. To find the area of a square, it'd be base times height. So if the side length's five, it'd be five times five, which is 25. So yes, it is true. All right, let's try this example where we need to write the conditional and converse statement within each biconditional. So it says a point divides a segment into two equal parts if and only if it is a midpoint. So remember, this can be our hypothesis, and here is our conclusion. So for the conditional, we can write if a point divides a segment into two equal parts, then it is a midpoint. The converse would be the reverse of that. So it would say, if a point is a midpoint, then we could say then it divides a segment into two equal parts. Next, we have to determine if it is true. And it is true. If a segment is cut in half by a point, then that point is the midpoint. Okay, for this example, we're just going to determine if it's true, and if it's false, we're going to give a counterexample. So it says y equals negative 5 if and only if y to the second power equals 25. This statement would be false. There are two possibilities that you could put in for this y to the second power and still get 25. While negative 5 to the second power is a possible solution, it's not the only solution. You could also say positive 5. So we can say y equals 5 as our counter example. 